Hello friends, so welcome back and uh, I am here to tell you that today uh, ukulele to me on especially on the switch with the Nintendo switch version uh, running so beautifully um, in I'm sure not what not what P but maybe 1080p maybe 900 um, in any case the game looks good the game looks great the game sounds great and to me the game is even though it is mechanically a game with problems a game where you have to babysit the camera a lot a game where you might have to get used to some of the mechanics and it might take you a little bit a game where occasionally things aren't explained super well the game has issues however the uh, to me Ukulele is a stronger game than Banjo Kazooie ultimately because of its story. Um, now, in the game, uh, I'm gonna see if I can uh, get to the main adventure just so that I uh, change the music up here. Um, Ukulele to me is a stronger game than Banjo Kazooie because of its story. Now, backstory. Um, Ukulele is this game, this recent game from 2017 that was uh, kickstarted um, by Platonic Games, which includes many ex-members of Rareware. Now, Rareware are the people who are involved with were involved with Donkey Kong Country, Rareware or Rare, this British company. Um, Donkey Kong Country, Banjo Kazooie, many classics for the Nin Super Nintendo and the Nintendo 64 era. Here we are um, in Tree Sack Tropics in the game. Uh, I wish I could get a bit of a better focus, but oh well. Um, uh, so anyway, the um, story of the game reflects, uh, as Gerardo the Completionist pointed out in his video, um, Pointed, uh, he pointed out that the story of the game reflects the story of its making, which is that when Microsoft bought uh, Rare from Nintendo and created a very crappy Banjo-Kazooie game in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, I haven't played it, but by all, uh, by all agreed purposes, it's a really shitty game that was really cobbled together and didn't... Um, didn't reflect the kind of sweetness and humor and uh, charm of the original games, of the original Banjo-Kazooie games. Um, now, the story here is that I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to return to the hub world here so I can show you the hub world. This is um, one of the worlds in the books that you go to, you travel through, um, like in uh, Mario 64, you travel through paintings, and here you travel through books. Um, um, in Mario 64, you jump into paintings to get to the from the hub world. Here you travel through these magical books, and you try to save these pages. Here's this magical book that you're standing on, um, and. Uh, here we are back in the, um, whoops, um, let me, uh, get away from that bad guy. Here we are back in the, uh, hive world, which is the, um, uh, world, and this is, uh, Grant Kirkhope's wonderful music. Um, he is one of the many, uh, original Rare team members, and he made the music for this game. I believe maybe David Wise of Donkey Kong Country fame uh, made the music for some minecart parts? I'm not sure. I haven't encountered them yet. Um, but anyway, that's uh, Grant Kirkhope's music that you're hearing, which is wonderful. And uh, such a treat to hear after all these years. But anyway, so I'm getting off track. The story of this game is that um, capital B, this big B, um, this big uh B corporate monolithic megalord guy is stealing all the uh, pages and all these magical books looking for this one particular book 
So if you think about it, uh, it's pretty obvious. He's stealing the books, which is the imagination, which is the story. And if you think about uh, Microsoft as owning the IP, the magical characters and world of Banjo-Kazooie, and having kind of messed it up, um, instead of making Banjo 3 like a lot of people wanted, but Microsoft thought that people wouldn't want it, um, unfortunately. And instead of allowing uh, Platonic Games to uh, make something with the rights to Magic Kazooie, then um, they they said no. You know, they said you can't uh, use Banjo Kazooie. You uh, so that's why Banjo Kazooie Three um, proper became Yuka Lele. Um, Yuka is the lizard. Um, Let's see if I can get a close-up view here. Um, uh, Yuka is the lizard, and Laylee is the bat, and uh, they're both pretty adorable. Particularly, uh, they play a similar role, similar but not the exact same, of um, Banjo and Kazooie, where Banjo, Banjo was kind of dumber, um, but uh, I think, but... Um, uh, Yuka the lizard is more of just a straight man and lately is this uh, kind of fast talking Catherine Hepburn kind of like what are you talking about blah, 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 blah. Um, a real fun character who I like a lot um, so uh, again and I kind of begs the question, what is, um, what are these other collectathon platformers about besides the joy and the imagination of the worlds? And maybe I'm answering my own question, but besides the joy and the imagination of, uh, going to these worlds, what are Banjo, what is Banjo Kazooie about? I mean, it's about getting your sister back. What is Super Mario Odyssey about? I mean, it's about getting the princess back. But what are these games at their core about? You know, um, what are their what are these games' values? And Platonic being an indie, an indie studio that kickstarted its way to um, like Shovel Knight, that kickstarted its way to uh, a campaign, even though it was a extremely um, uh, it was an extremely uh, controversial a game upon its release because it was very buggy apparently um i didn't play it on those releases i waited to play it on the switch um and the switch game runs quite well there are hiccups here and there uh there's a little bit of you know you can see a little bit of frame dropping from time to time uh and the loading times i think are a bit strangely long particularly for a digital game but again these are these are uh, gripes. These are minor gripes compared to the overall game, which is uh, a really beautiful experience. And I hope that uh, you see past the hype and listen to people like Gerard and Gilly the Kid and uh, uh, King K and these YouTubers and me who say, you know, give it a shot because it's it doesn't have the polish of Super Mario, I'm sure. I haven't played Mario. I've looked at a lot of it. Um, I certainly want to play it, and I will next, but that brings to me to my final point, which is this question of, like, what games do you buy as a consumer? So, I hearken back to my old video where I said that, um, I got the Switch with Sonic Mania, and that was the only game that I had for a long time, for a couple weeks or so felt like a long time anyway uh and i had even had sonic mania on the xbox one and my on my roommate's copy but i knew that this was a game that was gonna bring me so much more joy especially on the switch on the go um that uh that was the decision i made and uh it was it felt really meaningful to be like okay this is my own money and i don't have much of it but i was able to afford the switch and i was able to afford um the, you know, Sonic Mania, this one downloadable game, uh, and that felt like a really great decision because even, you know, I bought it twice, even, because I want Sonic Mania to have a sequel, and I want Yuga Laylee to have a sequel. These games that have, you know, quips and quibbles and minor problems with a sequel, uh, I think, uh, and with more development time, 
and with um, the trust of a first completed game out of the way, I think these development studios could really uh, make some amazing games because uh, these are, you know, these are, I, to my mind, very charming projects. Uh, they're projects that really deserve to be, um, they deserve to be supported. That, that's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want. It really helps me out a lot, particularly subscribing. And, uh, I hope you share some video games and some fun with some friends today. Okay, bye.